Hey, what's up there, everybody? It's Odin here. It's, uh, you know, it's been a little bit. Been a bit since I made a oh, Sunday video, a driving secret video, any kind of video. Um, I don't know. I've lost the, the oomph to want to do it in a lot of ways. And, uh, but, you know, I figure I should do it every once in a while, at least. Obviously not with the same regularity that I used to. I also haven't been going on streams lately. I've lost a lot of oomph for that. Like that's kind of been growing and, and, uh, I miss the people, but I don't miss the live element and trying to be on and. I don't know. It uh it's draining to me. And uh the other thing too is I've had such crappy internet issues when I've been streaming lately. And especially on StreamYard to where it's like we'll be talking and riffing and then like you know, to me it's on time, but there's like a ten second delay. So my joke that's like right on point, right there funny and poignant and time it and timed well uh everyone hears it like 10 seconds later and they're just like what you know and my mouth's not even moving anymore it's fucking stupid and so i'm like this is madding maddening and frustrating and uh and i just look like an idiot so i'm not gonna fucking do it so i've just not been doing streams i did a couple with uh flip city magazine uh christy invited me on but she uses Zoom, and I found that I don't have the same issues on Zoom that I do on uh, StreamYard. And then James and I were hanging out on StreamYard, like, back room, and it was being that stupid again. And I mentioned the Zoom thing, and then we tried Google Meetup, and that worked fine, too. So, the old school Zoom, Teams, Google Meet, uh, all work, but StreamYard sucks. So... I just, everybody uses StreamYard for live streaming, and so there's no point. Plus, I've just totally burned out on live streaming, so probably not going to do much of that. Maybe here and there. I'll give it a shot, but it's going to be maddening if I have to go through all the fucking lag again. And yeah, I just kind of got burned on some of the videos and stuff. It happens. I mean... Anybody who's watched these videos enough knows I can be a little moody uh, when it comes to these things. Um, where I just want to disappear from any kind of social light. And uh, also, full disclosure, I got pretty mopey around Father's Day. Um, thinking about certain things with my own kids that you know are not going to be talked about. But also thinking about, you know, not having my dad around anymore. And I thought a lot about him and um, been thinking a lot about him lately uh, and my mom. But uh, a little more about my dad, I think specifically uh, just coming to grips with mortality a little bit more. Um, you know, I if, if all goes well, I'm far from, uh, you know, the end of the line, but... I'm getting close to the middle of the, or, you know, I'm at the middle or maybe even half past halfway of the line, which there's still a lot of time if all goes according to plan, but you never guaranteed anything. So, so in that it was getting really mopey, but in that I'm also like, you don't have, you know, forever to do the things you want to do, uh, to leave the mark you want to leave. So, Moping isn't helping anything. It's not going to help your legacy one bit. Uh, you can't help sometimes from getting very introspective. I can't anyway. And uh, it takes a concerted effort to jumpstart myself out of it. Uh, amongst that was me saying, like, do another video. Um, uh, because at least then you're, I guess, uh, engaging even though there's nobody across from me, but, uh, it's more like interaction. Uh, it's something I need more of. I know I do, but I don't have a whole lot of time for trying to find some social element outside of work and going home and drawing and, uh, those things, uh, or time with my kids. So I'm like, I really don't have a social life. 
uh, and streaming was kind of filling that void to a certain extent because you're hanging out with people, people I like. Uh, but it's it's still different. I mean, I can't help but say it's it's different. And um, you know, I was like, man, I should find a softball league out here, but one. I don't know how much time I want to dedicate to being in a softball league. It would be cool. It'd be fun. Uh, it'd be physical, which I want, but take time away from what I want to do. Uh, uh, you know, even though I want to play softball, but, uh, it take time away from drawing, which, and, but to be honest, I haven't been drawing as much because I've been in that mopey mindset. So I'm like, what the fuck? I got to snap out of it. But the other thing is, I don't want to join a softball league out here. It's, you know, drawing near to summer and it's fucking hot. And I know the whole country, for the most part, is pretty damn hot right now. But uh, with this humidity, it's so soupy and hot. I just, it's not, I'm not used to it. So I don't think I could handle playing softball in this shit. I could, but I don't think I want to. But anyway, that's all whatever it is, you know. This shit comes and goes, um, but it does bring to bear on certain needs uh, socially. And uh, I think one of the things about why um, marriage works, even potentially after the kids have grown and you're in the empty nester phase, is because at least you do have that social element. It's like this other person in the house that's always there. Now, whether you get along or whether it's, uh, you know, you do your thing, I do mine, uh, it's still there. It's still always kind of there. So there's something to be said for that. And I think um, part of the reason why marriage works after into the empty nest phase is for that very reason, you know. And oftentimes, older people, you know, especially as they're, uh, you know, they don't have a job to go to or whatever. They find these outlets socially. My grandma was like, both of my grandmas, my mom's mom and my dad's mom, were both uh, social butterfly ladies. You know, they they had their groups and their get-togethers and things like that all the time. So they were constantly filling them. Now, both of my granddads were very isolated in nature but they didn't need that social element they would hide from it because it was always around them because of their wives you know their wives were there plus their wives would have friends over for uh card nights or whatever or drag them along to this thing or that thing like oh you got to go to this with me and so they kind of had that void filled even if reluctantly so they didn't usually often have to have you know, the more social old guys probably, you know, do the whole get together at McDonald's and talk about the good old days or something. But, um, you know, you, you find that you need that. Now I have work, but the nature of my job, uh, which I love, I wouldn't want it any other way, but it doesn't lend itself to social things. The nature of my job is uh, I do my job. Only time I talk to somebody is when they need something. There's not really a lot of engagement. Um, and so when there is, like I kind of light up. And so the people who do engage with me, they, we have like these great conversations, but it's like, it's just in these little spurts. And that's kind of all the social element of my life at the moment. But uh, that's it. No complaints. You know, it's still, I think that was another thing. It was uh, hit me hard about, uh, just around Father's Day it was just being here in Missouri and and being kind of detached from friends and family that I've known up to this point, and just missing a lot of things and missing a lot of people and um that and it just whole like yeah you know, why are you here well you're sacrificing what you want for the sake of your kids and. Uh, as they get older, that relationship become the dynamic becomes quite different than when they were little. When they were little, 
you know, I'd be like, Hey, let's go do this. And they'd just be like, yay. You know, like we just go do it. And as they become teenagers, it just becomes a little more, again, that kind of detached, uh, feel about it. Now it's not, my kids are like being rude or, you know, they're not like, it's just a different dynamic. It's not that they're being mean to dad or something, or they're like uh, always being sticks in the muds, but their, their lives are becoming their own. And so they don't want to be like dragged along for whatever the parents tell them to do. They want to kind of like experience their own personal life. And that is a very normal thing in my opinion and I think it's good for their uh, independence, but that makes it hard for me because I'm like, I moved out here for your guys' sake. Um, and I still think it's the right move. I still think it's beneficial, but it's just, a, it takes on a different dynamic as they become teenagers. So, so that like a little bit of a sunrise sunset moment as my kids are getting older and I'm getting older um, and thinking about my dad and uh, mortality and all these things, you know, and being alone, you get, you can be extra introspective without any distraction. So then, uh, then you can really, I wouldn't say it was depression because, uh, I, I know what depression is. That's why I just use terms like introspection, um, you know, maybe mopey, uh, but still, those things can get hefty and if and if they're hefty alone uh the heft is a little stronger without any kind of distraction so so it can definitely take you into a play and i was like you got to make a video you know jump start yourself you gotta force yourself to do certain things that i didn't want to do but they really needed done um and just when it comes to that, like, hey, you got to like kind of really trick yourself or talk yourself into doing the things that, you know, need done or, you know, you would enjoy if you just got started. Uh, you know, that's when you're like, OK, it's time to really uh, take stock of the situation and be a little more proactive about um, where you're at and where you want to go. So anyway, that's all. You know, and I recorded uh, some driving and singing videos lately. And what's funny is my my oldest brother, he asked me because he was curious about these driving and singing videos. He's like, so do you do that in like one take? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's one take. And he's like, well, do you screw up? Or, you know, I'm like, well, it's not live. So if I fuck up, I just stop it and uh, try again or... You know, and I was telling him, you know, some of those songs, there was probably like four or five times where I'd get to a part where I fucked up and I'd have to retry again. And maybe put a song on the shelf. There's certain songs that I've never p uploaded, but I've sang and recorded myself 10, 20 times probably, trying to get one that I thought sounded all right. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, cutting room floor shit that no one ever sees. And that's why I made like a little blooper reel because I did have a lot of these ones where I, I hadn't deleted them yet. And I wish I would have kept a lot more because that blooper reel would have been <laughs> full, but I usually delete them. But there was a few that I hadn't deleted. So I was like, ah, oh, that'd be funny to show some of the mistakes or like the time I almost got in an accident in the middle of recording. But the one thing that's probably hard to really recognize, you know, maybe you can surface level go, yeah, it's probably not the most conducive environment to like sing your best. Now, a lot of people sing in their car, but if you don't have the pressure, I guess, of doing a performance that is good or your best or whatever, it's certainly not a conducive environment because for one, you are first and foremost paying attention to your drive. And so when I moved out here, I didn't make any for a long time because I had a new commute, uh, learning new roads. And I'm like, I can't be distracted by trying to sing and record. And 
hit start, hit stop. Um, but there's a million things you think about. And that's the thing, like the distractions of, oh, that guy's tailgating me or that person's merging, you know, like whatever actual driving shit or, oh shit, I'm going to miss my turn if I don't get in this lane. You know, all the, all these things that you have to think about while you're driving. So that's why I do it on my commute usually, or if I'm on just a straight stretch of highway, because it's like, you, you less, less to think about. But, um, even then, you know, driving could be so sporadic and random, you know, you just get one idiot all of a sudden and you're like, fuck, that threw me right off. Just some guy like flying by or something. So there's that. There's the other element of like, uh, like I said, coordinating the song, starting at the right time, at the right time of hitting record, uh, having the camera ready, um, you know, oftentimes I'm smoking or I have the window down or I'm navigating some other element. Uh, like I said, not the least of which is just driving itself. And then I'm sitting down, like sitting down is not the best posture for singing. Now you can definitely sing sitting down and I built out a lot of those songs and they're all sitting down and they're not the worst, but I can do all of those songs better standing up, projecting into a microphone, uh, getting a better stance, you know, grounding myself and pushing through the diaphragm and, you know, all these things that like you want to do properly for singing. Well, you're just sitting there plus constantly distracted. Um, the other element too is like, I was looking, I've uploaded 125 different songs and each of those songs you have to learn really well. Now I would have to learn them even more well if I didn't have, if I was just playing the music without the vocal track. Uh, you know, I just take the song and sing along with it and usually kind of bury it enough that my vocals are at the forefront. But, um, there are ways you can get the track without the vocals. And I thought about doing that, but then I'm like, well, there, there's a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of like uh, bumper rails uh, with the original vocal track being there because, you know, if you miss your cue, you catch it because you hear them do it. Or if you're a little off key, you catch it because, you know, you can hear that harmonic dissonance of your of your voice and their voice being off key. And that's why it's actually really good to sing with people if you have any kind of ear for tone uh, is because you can tell when you're off key, uh, if you don't have an ear for tone, then you, you won't care. You won't notice, but, um, but anyway, <laughs> so there's that like learning the songs and like I said, 125 different songs, uh, knowing the lyrics, uh, knowing the, the tempo, the, the changes, the, um, uh, inflection, because typically I'm trying to sing or emulate the singer a lot of ways, you know, sometimes it's a little more myself, but oftentimes I'm trying to more or less just ape their singing style. And so you want to get all the different, uh, fluctuations and movement within the voice. So knowing that, knowing the lyrics, knowing the melody, knowing the breaks, knowing, uh, you know, all these things. So there's all that to deal with. I mean, honestly, there's just uh, a lot going on and it's not um, conducive, I guess, to, uh, you know, if I was just going to go into a studio and belt out a song, it's all the elements are aligned to make it the best it can be. Plus the fact that it's on my phone, which doesn't have the best camera or, or, re or audio recording you know, so everything is not going to sound great. Um, you know, you have road noise, you have whatever else going on in the background. Um, and I don't do a lot of heavy songs because the camera or my phone, you know, like it, it distorts extra when I distort my voice really loudly. So if I do something really heavy, it just sounds really bad because it's just too much distortion at that volume. So there's this weird distortion thing that happens with the phone. Um, so yeah, just, uh, just a lot of things that I'm like, 
I, well, and then that's the thing. I get, well, also it's a single take. So even though there's a lot that hit the cutting room floor that I'm just like, that wasn't good enough. You know, that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. Or that was a bad take. And this was a good one. Um, it's still all single take, you know, I may have done four versions before I got the one I liked, but it's still from the moment I hit record to the end, there's no post-production. You know, <laughs> it's just, did you hit it or did you not? Kind of like karaoke, you get up there or kind of like a performance in general, you get up there and, uh, there's no altering it. Once it's done, it's done. So I don't know why I got on that tangent, but, um, well, I was just thinking about how, you know, I can be pretty hard on myself with what I would upload. Now I've uploaded 125 songs. So obviously I'm not shy about <laughs> uploading songs, but if you saw the amount that I've recorded while driving, because there's tons of opportunity, excuse me because I'm driving all the time to uh, record. So I'm always like, yeah, we'll turn on the radio and hit record and see what happens. Um, but if I find a song that I want to do driving the singing for, I do have to learn it a little more uh, or make sure I know it before I, you know, jump in and try to do it and upload it, you know? So like learning all the lyrics and, all that shit. So. All that to say, I don't know. I'm just my my own worst critic. And I guess in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is it's pretty damn good considering all all the odds that I face to uh, make it happen. <laughs> and the blooper reel, like I said, it shows a little microcosm of that, but there's, there's so many that just got deleted that... Would have made the blooper reel, but, you know, I didn't think about it until later on. Then I was like, oh, that's actually a good idea. Just, like, throw together all my fuck-ups. Because it happens almost the same every time. I'll fuck up a lyric, and I'll be like, fuck! And then turn it off. But, um... <laughs> or just have a coughing fit in the middle, or, you know, uh, whatever it is. Just get distracted by the road. That's probably something that happens the most. Is I'll just be singing along like I would normally. And then I'll focus on the road and forget that I was supposed to be singing. And then I'm like, oh, you just stopped singing. <laughs> but, you know, the road demands your attention. That demands your attention. You know, I'm not going to get in a car accident just to try to salvage the recording. So anyway, I don't know what, why I got on that tangent, but um, I'll try to do more driving and singing videos. I, I, uh, I mean, there's still plenty of songs I want to do. Um, one of the ones that I've done several times and it's just never, never been good enough for me to want to upload. And part of it is because of the the sheer volume, like. Um, and power that's behind the vocals it does distort and fuck up and it doesn't sound very well whereas like if I were in the studio and I would have one of those tracks that I sang would have totally been a good cut but sometimes it just doesn't sound right over the phone so but the song that I'm talking about I've done it I don't know I've tried so many times is uh stranglehold from ted nugent it's one of my favorite songs i love it and i love his voice on it i love his vocals on it i love his guitar work i love the rhythm section i love the entire song uh, i think it's one of the best rock and roll songs ever ever written and there's been times where it's been close but i'm like that's just not good enough it's not it's not because the power falls out with the phone recording where uh, a lot of that vocal resonance 
would be picked up by a dynamic microphone in a studio um, or a condenser microphone in the studio uh, on the phone. It's just like, and in the car with the road noise and the music, it's, it just doesn't. So, so that one may never see the light of day. Maybe I'll upload one of those one of these days, but, um, but I like doing the drive and sing videos. My favorite part about it is, uh, the variation of styles and artists and going from, you know, everything from Peter Steele and Don Williams and Crash Test Dummies, like these really bar baritone bass voices, uh, to like getting these tenor voices like Paul Simon and, uh, John Denver and things like that. Um, Gene Pitney or uh, what's another one that's really high or like Billy Joel or something, you know, and providing that range, you know, going like, hey, yeah, I could go down to the deepest of the deep. I can go to some of the highest of highs. Um, I like showing off the range. Now, I'll never be as good as them at their song, um, you know, and I'll never get as low as Peter Steele. I know that. I'll never get as high as uh, Gene Pitney or um, John Denver on certain parts, but like I, I know the songs I can and I do them and uh, I like, I like that broadened and then just style variation, you know, going from uh, hard rock and metal and seventies, eighties rock to old, old ass country, which is probably my go-to and my favorite. So uh, I like it. I like it for what it is, but uh, that said, I don't know. I don't know why I haven't been uploading lately. Nothing's been making the cut, um, and I think I'm just overly critical. And I think me talking out all the reasons why something may not be as good as it should be is uh, me making excuses for why I'm so critical, or or not me making excuses. Me making. Uh, trying to convince myself not to be so critical but but the reality is your average person listening doesn't care about all those things they're just gonna be like ah it wasn't as good as the studio version it's like it's never gonna be i'm sitting in my car you know but anyway let's talk about comic books <laughs> why we're here i'm not i mean I, i'm still a singer but i'm not a singer where that's like the passion that i'm trying to push you know i do that for fun singing is fun it's cathartic but so i was making comic books um here you can see this is a uh, another page for kill them dead um we're moving on to another phase of the story and we've got husk uh walking along the shore the last scene was the Ouroboros of the worm dragon husk on the shore after battling the minotaur and it feels like a moment where you get to breathe but there's no moment to breathe in this world and in this book um she's here attacked by this uh big octopus with multiple eyes and teeth uh monster and uh, has to slice through tentacle and get away. Now, here, <laughs> there's a little inside uh, oops as I speak about the fuck-ups driving and singing. There's also fuck-ups in drawing. And one that uh, has happened more than I'd like to admit on this. And I could get all the way to the end of it to where I'm like, that's a great page, that's a good drawing. And realize, because... Husk, uh, earlier in the story, she got her arm bitten off by the Minotaur. And remembering which arm <laughs> got bitten off. I had this whole page drawn and I loved it. And I was like, this is great. And I was about to take it to go scan it. When I realized, uh, here she has the right arm still. The correct arm, not the right arm, but. The correct arm still in this panel where she's slicing through. Uh, here, I had her bracing herself and getting up uh, with the wrong arm. 
And then here I had her running away with the rod. So, so you can see her little nub there. This used to be her arm, and you can almost kind of see a little, uh, a little ghost of what used to be there. And then I had the nub on this side. <laughs> and I went, oh, so I had to erase all this shit, and I was very happy with it. I erased it all and switch arms. And that happened on another page as well. And part of it is like a switch in uh, stance or look. Because this top panel, her arms, uh, it looks like it's on this side, right? And it's because she's from the side and she's kind of canted a little bit. So it looks like it's on this side of her, this side of her body. So when I came down to this panel, I went, oh, it's on this side. Just because my brain was already thinking that side. Even though the camera had turned. And so then, you know, that side is incorrect. And I did the same down here because I was just following this one. And uh, like I said, it took me a while before I just went, oh, whoops. But I'm glad I caught it. Um, there's been a couple things. Uh, um Skunk Artworks has pointed out too, where he's like, uh, where is her finger or something like that? You know, and I'm like, oh fuck, I, f I meant to draw that and I forgot. So, you know, it's nice having someone on the back end and catch those things, but I'm trying to catch it myself. But the page before this, I did the same, not the page before this, the one before that. I did the same thing where I got her arm that's cut off. I I got it wrong and it was on a shifting panel and I did the same on this one, which is the next page. Um, you won't be able to see it. This is all blurry there. Kind of get it focused. Maybe, maybe you can see it. I don't know, but yeah, so this is kind of like, these are all like sweeping panels. They're kind of like coming at uh, sweeping angles, just long wise. But this first one, her back is turned. And then she turns around to face the threat. This tentacle's coming after her. She turns around, but my brain didn't turn around her arms that were... So again, I had the one arm here that was supposed to be the nub. And I had to fix it. Luckily, I didn't get too far in this drawing. I had the same on this panel. I had the arm switch. So, you know, I caught that one pretty quick, but I was like... Shit, you do this a lot, man. <laughs> like, you keep forgetting which which hand is which. So, anyway, that's just a little what inside baseball into the struggles of uh, drawing comic art consistently. You, you find these little things, you're like, duh, duh, what an idiot. So real quick, and I'm going to wrap this up because my voice is starting to, my throat's starting to get dry, but um, I got these. Oh, man, this is heavy. Uh, so those of you back the second printing, your books will be on their way. Um, It's a heavy stack, and that's not all of them. There's a bunch more, but um, but I look good. Uh, you know, I like the the skunk uh, cover there, and uh, yeah, everything looks good. So, so yeah, these will be shipping out to everybody who did the second printing campaign, and then this will be at uh, you know, when we do cons and things like that. Um. We'll be selling these. So that that campaign's still open. If you want to get your uh, second printing, um, you know, if you're a completionist, it's uh, it's a little different. It's got a different cover, uh, different uh, page pointage and things like that. Uh, just some slight differences. It's got our new uh, logo on it. So, uh, but, I, you know, very happy, excited to get it out there to people. Um, and excited to have it. I'll take some to my local comic shop. She said she would host, host them, but yeah, 
Now, the only uh, other difference is there's no coal story in the back. Um, but we got a Bastards and a Shove 2 ad back here. Kill Them Dead ad. Same ending page. Uh, you know, all the interior stuff's the same. But um, but it's black and white. But I thought it turned out pretty good. So, so yeah. Like I said, if you're a completionist and want the other version of Unconditional Shove Volume 1, or like I've said before, if you want like a reader copy, you know, that first printing will never not be the first printing. And it was very small, very, very small print run. Uh, so this one uh, is a much bigger run. But um, you can get those. Have fun, my comic. I'll put the link below. But yeah. Unconditional Shove Volume 1 is the second printing, but turned out really good. Uh, I think we'll keep using this printer because uh, the price was the price was good, uh, the quality was good, everything was good. And they're easy to work with and fast, so I don't see any reason. And they're in the States, which that's uh, another thing that is helpful. And now that I got this, maybe I'll do a walkthrough of this. Maybe do some voice characters and read one of the stories or something. That'd be fun. A little read through. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what's what's going on. Like I said, my voice is starting to hurt. And I don't know why. I think I, well, I was singing a lot, driving and singing in the car earlier. What I was doing was like these big long blocks of uh, where that that's even more pressure. But I was doing like like my favorite hits, basically, like songs that I've recorded, but maybe I wanted to try again or they were just some of my favorites. And then I was just driving along doing like uh, se several at a time, you know, however long my my drive was, however many songs I could fit in there. So like one block was like four or five. Another one was like four or five. And, uh, so I, I did two blocks today driving and I may upload those. I don't know, but those ones, like I said, even more pressure because if you record it, if the first three songs were great and you fuck up on the fourth one or whatever, uh, you know, that sucks, you know? And so it may be kind of a warts and all, whatever, just, you know, <laughs> here's me doing four songs but they're uh again varied styles and just and it was totally random so it was like whatever came up out of those that collection of songs that i thought were worth doing again and just you know it was a uh, song roulette so so it was kind of fun but i think that might be why my voice is a little scratchy right now but anyway uh yeah check out the unconditional show volume two campaign also, while you're over at Fun My Comic, check out Magnificent Bastards issue two, which is uh, still funding right now. Uh, again, very excited for this book. I talk about it a lot. Uh, so excited for this book, but it really should be doing better. There should be more people buying this because uh, you have the option of reading issue one for free. Uh, and I think once you do, you'll find that it's a, a worthwhile book and having and issue two is going to be even more wild. So very excited. And then uh, sign up for the splash down below. That's Skunk Artworks children's book that he's putting out, uh, which will be launching soon on Indiegogo. Uh, that one is, uh, in my mind, is a game changer. It's something totally unique, totally different, and all Skunk Artworks. It's his story, it's his artwork, and his artwork is second to none. So. So you want to check out that. You want to be there on the ground floor when it launches. Um, great book for your kids. Uh, great book for your adults. It's just a great book. So, and that one is, uh, from what I gather, is uh, all the all the artwork and all the story is done. There's just a collection of pre-press and getting it ready, and it'll be ready to print. So there won't be a lag after it launches. You know, you do the campaign, but like. It's it's all ready to go, so so that'll be exciting. So check out the splash as well, and keep your ear to the grindstone. Is that the correct term? 
ear to the ground. <laughs> keep your eyes, keep your ears peeled. Keep your nose peeled. Keep your eyes peeled for uh, more shit coming from <laughs> Broken Compass Entertainment. It's not shit. It's good stuff. Anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, ex uh, I guess expect videos more often or more often than however, like a month between like I did, but uh, they'll just be sporadic still. So don't worry about it. <laughs> if you enjoy them, enjoy them when they come out. If not, uh, no, no worries. You won't miss me. <laughs> anyway, see ya. It's Odin. Later.